Hi, I'm Soma from Prankle Canvas. I run art workshops and classes around Perth, which are aimed at finding relaxation through art activities. And today we are going to paint a koi pond with cherry blossom. So the painting is very easy. We are going to start with just the background. For the colors, what you need is a naphthol red, titanium white, Russian blue. You could use any blue, ultramarine would work as well. For the red, though I'm using naphthol red light, any cool red would work. I have a lemon yellow, a paints gray. Uh, I'm using paints gray, but if you can't find this, uh, just black would work. And then I have, well, that's it. That's all I have. For the brushes, you're going to need an assortment of flat brushes and round brushes. Now, when you um, look in your art stash for round brushes, look for ones that are uh, medium-sized ones and also pointy ones. The pointy ones are really fine detail ones, are good for drawing the finer details in a painting. Uh, you're going to need a spritzer bottle. Uh, and I've got a Sharpie here. Uh, this is optional and I'll tell you why when we are uh, making the drawing for koi fish. You'll need a water container and rags to clean brushes, which I don't think I have here, but rags are good to continuously keep brushes while you're painting so that colors don't mix and muddy up your painting. And you need a canvas. I'm using different sizes of canvas today. You can use any shape or form. And what we are going to make is that. A beautiful, I'm just holding it the wrong way. <laughs> a beautiful koi fish pond. Whoop, there you go. And so let's start with the background. I'm going to squeeze out to start with. Some red. Titanium white. Did I mention we are using acrylic paints today? All right, some titanium white and a tiny, tiny bit of lemon yellow. The color we are aiming for is a warm pink. Now, because I have a big canvas here, I'm picking up the largest flat brush that I have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the pink and white today, mix them to create a pink, sort of a salmon pink, but I don't like it to be called salmon pink. I refer to it as warm pink. That's still too dark, so I'm going to add some more white. So the idea is actually to have a light pink at the top, and then as we go down, we are going to transition to a darker pink. All right, so since I've started with a really dark pink, I'm going to add some more white. There we go. Tiny, tiny bit of yellow. We don't want too much. Otherwise, it's going to turn orange. There we go. Now, remember, you don't want your paint to be thick and gooey. You want it to be sort of middle consistency, not too runny, not too thick and gooey. If it's thick and gooey, it won't spread properly on, on your canvas. Now, before I start, what I'm going to do is mist the canvas. So that's a tiny water spray or a misting bottle. The reason we do this is so that the paint, paint moves smoothly and evenly. If you get drippy bits, now what you're aiming for is just a mist. We don't want drippy butt puddles. And if that happens, all you do is absorb it with some tissues or paper towels. There we go. 
So I'm going to start from the top in crisscross brush strokes. From one corner horizontally across. Now I wonder if you can see the paint is getting a bit scratchy patchy over here. So I'm going to come back in again and mist it a little bit more from a distance just so that the effect is nice and smooth and continue painting. Crisscross, keep moving your brush, keep it loose. Now somewhere about the one third mark, I'm going to let the paint fade away. If you still have extra paint on your brush, just get rid of it and fade it away. Then I'm going to add a tiny little bit more of the naphthol red or cool red if that's what you have. And just make a little bit darker version of this warm pink. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to start from one third from the bottom. Now I'm getting patchy bits again. So again, if that happens, just mist it. Mist the canvas. It keeps the brush moving smoothly and the paint go better onto the canvas. And then I'm going to slowly move upwards with crisscross brush strokes. Keep your brush strokes loose, keep it moving. It doesn't need to be perfect because those imperfections from your brush strokes are actually going to add to the textures in water, in the koi pond. So don't worry if it's not perfect. And you know what? When you don't stress and you enjoy the process of painting, that's when you'll find that the outcome is really pleasant and successful. If not, it's still therapeutic. All right, so no stress. Enjoy the brush strokes, keep it going, keep it loose. And as we come lower, I'm going to add some more red. See, I hardly have any paint left there, but whatever I have should be enough to create the darkest pink. I still have a tiny little bit of lemon yellow left, so let's see what, if I can make the darkest pink. Yeah, that's plenty, and I'm going to add some water. And this time I'm going to start from the bottom. Now, one thing that I didn't mention, because I'm using a boat, but at home if you are using a stretched canvas panel, then what you need to do is go around and paint the edges. What that does is create a very nice gallery wrapped look when the painting's finished. Once more, I'm going to miss my canvas. I'm going to miss myself on my face. There we go. I think I'm going to darken it some more. It's still quite light. It's good to have a darker bottom. It gives it a more depth in the background, oh sorry, foreground. So that part there is the foreground and I'm just trying to give it more darkness. So by adding more of my naphthol red. Whoops, drop my bottle. Ah. I like that. That's nice and dark. And gently take it up and blend it with the previous lighter area. Again, just stand back and see if you have any patchy areas. Sometimes it's enough to just wet the tip of the brush. And sometimes you might need to spritz it with your spritzy bottle. I'm just going to 
not take any more paint just use the tip of the brush to smoothen out any rough areas or where there's no paint do some touch-ups And there, there's your background ready. Now the next step would be to use a hair dryer to dry the background. But what I'm going to do is I've actually got another piece, a background ready to use today. So we're not waiting for uh, the background to dry. I'll put this wet one away. Uh, we need to make perhaps another painting. Okay. Now, you, you possibly can see that there is some kind of a drawing there. What I have done is create a template for you to download. There's a template you can use to trace the koi fish onto... Uh, onto the canvas. Now the a way to trace it which you all would be familiar with is use a carbon paper or a tracing paper but there's also an easier way if you don't have any transfer paper at home. So download it, print it and then what you're going to do is use a soft leaded pencil. So soft lead pencils would be 2Bs, 4Bs and 6Bs easily found in any uh, school supply shop or even online art stores and then if I can find a pencil, yep, <laughs> got a pencil. So what you're going to do, can you see how I have just made rubbings on the paper? All you're going to do is rub the pencil one way and another way. What that does is it saturates the paper with the graphite from the pencil. And then all you do is place it on the canvas. Now I'm going to position it in a way that the koi fish is roughly in central one third uh, section of the canvas. Okay, and then you're simply going to do what you do with the transfer paper, you're going to draw over it. Now again, if you're going to use a stretch canvas, uh, it might be a good idea to have some kind of a book as a support on the back, that way the pencil won't poke through into the canvas and create a hole. All right, so easy, very easy. So I've traced the pattern there. And then what I did, just so that the drawing is somewhat visible while we're video shooting, I uh, drew over it with some Sharpie. Now that's an optional step, you don't need to. Uh, if you can, if the lines, pencil lines are visible, then just start painting right away. If not, you could do what I did. I've used a very fine tip Sharpie to draw the profile and uh, fine tune the drawing so it's more visible. All right, next step, we are going to follow a sequence to paint this koi pond with the cherry blossoms. We are going to start with painting the koi fish first. Then we are going to paint the circular water ripples. And the last thing that we are going to do is the cherry blossoms, flowers and the branch, all right? So the fish is pretty easy. 